Thank you. Good afternoon. In fact, I dedicate my talk today to Dr. Srinivasan. Most of you have met him here in this uh, ICCF. He is the one who introduced me to come to Call Future because I am a, basically a mechanical come aeronautical engineer and uh, I have been working on product development and system engineering. But last 10 years we have been working on this uh, prompted by Dr. Srinivasan and I am very happy to meet uh, such a galaxy of uh, experts, professors, academicians, industries, people from many countries who are all committed to change the world to a greener and uh, also safer world at a lower cost. I am sure if you cannot change, nobody else can change. <laughs> this is what I am convinced. So thanks for this opportunity. So in India, we are three or four people working on this. But uh, right now, I am the only team uh, currently busy with this uh, at uh, Bangalore. So I would like to tell about uh, uh, how we are focused towards a product development and a user oriented and less of uh, uh, mathematics behind because there was a talk by one of my colleagues, Professor Naran Vera, yesterday you couldn't give it. He was covering the mathematical portion. So, uh, we at this place, we have a small team of about uh, half a dozen people working on the center of energy. And uh, we call it actually uh, excess gen energy generator. So we are calling sustained excess energy generator C-Gen. And we have done so far about 500, more than 500 experiments. And uh, last 100 have been reasonably successful, that is repetition replication has taken place and uh, some academicians came to our lab and say okay we have seen excess heat coming here we want you to re 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 replicate it in my campus somebody is in iit guwahati he said can you allow me to do it in guwahati so we moved our hardware and the hydrogen gas and things like that and he took one and a half months to replicate then he gave a certificate yes there is excess heat generated even in Guwahati, just like what you saw in Bangalore. This gave us a lot of confidence because the task can be repeated by somebody else, a professor in a different department, different institution, and he says, yes, it has happened. And uh, so far, we have been, uh, our uh, success is, we have done many experiments, and uh, you know, most of the time, we keep the echo experiment on a 24-7 basis. You keep the reactor on, switch on and go, and for three months, we have kept it on, and there is excess heat maintained for complete three months. We switch it off after three months because of various administrative reasons, <laughs> but uh, it may last a little longer also. For three months, we have got excess energy. I will show you some graphs and some photographs. And uh, of course, our uh, job is not completed. We would like to take it better efficiency, higher efficiency. And also, we want to give the prototype, engineered prototypes to a customer. For example, one industry has come, uh, come forward, and army, our Indian army says, can you give it to us for our use in uh, uh, cold regions where we want to have excess heat uh, in our uh, bunkers? where they are using kerosene and coal and uh, uh, diesel for warming, keeping the army warm. So I say, can you uh, can give us something which is better than what we do? So we are trying to find solutions for these two people. So this is how it looks. It's very similar to many experiments what you have saw last one day, two days. And a small reactor about, uh, about uh, 15, 20 centimeter long. It's a mini reactor. We had made three types of reactors small, medium, big. So the army said give us the small because we want a mini, we want to carry it in our, in our uh, suitcase. So make a small, not, not more than one and a half foot so that I can put it, pack it and take it. And you want, we'll give you half a dozen if you want, don't give a big one, I can't carry it. So we made a mini reactor, small one, and inside is what is shown here. It's got a, I will explain to you what is inside. And the left bottom is our lab, we have for people working and the center figure the device the sustain the excess heat generator as a device and uh, this was packed for the army what you see at the right bottom he can carry it to this, this place and then keep it wherever he wants 
and number he wants, he wants to keep three numbers, five numbers he can keep. I will tell you the performance what we have achieved. So this is one of the uh, photograph of our uh, uh, lab where you see there are four reactors kept as a cluster. Three of them are having the active fuel, which is uh, palladium coated nickel with hydrogen atmosphere, sealed, sealed, no flow. And uh, fourth one is a control reactor, like just like you asked. We have put only nickel or only hydrogen. We have done, we also used alumina powder. Instead of uh, nickel powder, we put only alumina. So we make sure that the control reactor doesn't have a fuel, that is no palladium and on a nickel plating. Rest of all, we are replicated. And uh, we have found uh, only when the fuel is there, there is an excess heat generated. I will show you the results. Oh, this is a video of the lab. You can see this is one, two, three. And this is the control reactor, the fourth. If you have made a cluster of three active, one, one control. This uh, is uh, experiment going on. I just thought I will show your lab. If you are welcome to Bangalore, come and see. <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm happy to be here at Chechin. So these are some of the results. I will show you the graph. Okay. So the setup is, as you have many of you seen, is stainless steel, small cylinder, fully sealed. And uh, it's got a heater in the center along the axis, which gives, uh, we are tested from 25 watts to 200 watts heat input. And our uh, reference is 100 watts. So you put 100 watts as a reference, you can vary from 20 to 200, but reference is 100, that's what Army said, give us with 100 watts. And there's a nickel mesh, specially purchased from the market. And uh, palladium is uh, coated by, we have done three types of coating, electroplating, then uh, we have also done uh, 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 RF sputtering, and also we have done mechanical uh, uh, packing. So all three we have done, and the performance of the uh, palladium coated nickel is approximately the same. We have done both hydrogen and deuterium, separate experiments. We did not find any big difference between hydrogen gas and deuterium gas for the same experiment, same input power, same instrumentation. And uh, the setup is uh, for heating. We have used thermocouples, K-type mostly, and uh, we have done the measurement at different locations of the reactor. And uh, we had a data acquisition system working for three months. And I will show you the results. So this is the result of the cluster. Three active, one control. Four are identical, fabricated in the same company, assembled by the same team, and all raw materials identical except the fort, which is a uh, reference unit, which had, I will show you, it has got a only hydrogen gas here in this example. And uh, the active one, nickel plus palladium with hydrogen. And the, they have been tested. And once the steady state temperature has been achieved, which is about 68 hours, these results are given, which maintained for three months. The surface temperature, what you have measured on the cylinder core, is for the reference unit 260 degrees centigrade. Steady state, it maintained same temperature, these four values for three months. And the active one, 300, 284, 303. So all four were maintained continuously for three months. So you see that active ones has maintained for the same input power, same condition, same gas temperature, same geometry, materials, uh, about nearly 20, 30 watts more. We, that also I'll show you. The, the 100 watts input, 130 watts is the output measured, calculated, and validated. So we, we were discussing with uh, people and one of the thing was uh, helium may be the reason for excess heat, as we have heard in the last two days. And we used ISC Bangalore 
to measure the helium. They have a quadrupole mass spec. So they said, you bring the uh, reactor to our room. So we have to carry this tested reactor to different place and test it. We have done two, three measurements so far. But uh, uh, two are giving successful helium detection when there was no helium before the experiment. After the experiment, the helium said, and uh, we are not happy because he is not able to quantify and tell me how much is helium. He says, yes, helium is there, how much? He is not able to measure. He says, I don't have proper resolution to tell you the numbers. So we think we, the challenge is still there. We want to measure the helium using mass spec, maybe some other place I don't have in my lab. And uh, uh, maybe a better resolution, mass spec we require. This is what we feel. So otherwise, uh, we are very happy with the results. And the army says uh, even 30%, 40% more, I don't mind. Give me half a dozen. I want to test it in my bunker. So we see that there is a 30% excess heat for three months continuously by number of... This is one example. We have done two reactors, three reactors, four reactors. And every time we are able to get repeated performance in this test setup. And uh, we are still not very happy with the helium measurement. We have to continue to use it. And uh, we also have to improve the efficiency, 1.3 to maybe 3.0, we want to achieve. So we are trying to work out how to handle this uh, challenge. Otherwise, uh, uh, many users have come forward for industry use, agricultural use, and army use. So we hope to get them benefit and uh, so your references. I thank uh, uh, Kubre, then Mizuno, then Nagel, they all are here. <laughs> and Adam, we are inspired by very good results and I'm happy that we have a good uh, comparison to show. Thank you. Any Thanks. Is there a place for several questions? In one is for me again. <laughs> I keep okay. Thank you, okay. Dr. Ramaro, for a very interesting presentation. Have you attempted, and I apologize if I missed this in your presentation, but have you attempted to analyze for isotopic shifts? Yes. We have given the material. We, we have some uh, uh, transmutation results. We have taken the sample after the reactors have been tested for three months. We are given to a materials analysis, and we found there is a shift in the uh, the ratio of various elements, metallic elements, from nickel, palladium, copper is there, and uh, we are trying to find a, a logical con uh, statement, what has changed, what reason. We are yet to come to a conclusion, but there is a shift in the uh, ana metal, metal analysis done. We yeah. have the results. Did, did I miss it, or did you display any of, the, any of that? In... No, I didn't show. Correct. Okay. Because we have not come to conclusion. Is it every time you have a copper present, sometimes copper is there, sometimes it's not there, like that. Sometimes a iso isotopes of nickel. Uh, we are okay, seeing. thank you. We'll talk later. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice presentation. So what I understood that you used mesh palladium, yes? Yeah, nickel mesh. Uh, Purchased from the and, market. And what is the dimension uh, for it this It is about mesh? Uh, approximately, uh, there is a multi layer, and the okay. dimension is about 20 millimeter by 30 millimeters, approximately. 20 by 30 millimeters. Okay, but uh, do you have some formulas for uh, this kind of things? Because, of course, uh, if you remember, I have one uh, poster presentation here. So I combined uh, nuclear physics and uh, mesh material things. So I have got already the formulas. And if you uh, have some parameters, so easy to calculate the screening energy. For I, so I can do all parameters I can share with you. You want to use it in your uh, mathematical, you can use it. I can give you all the data. OK, so sure, sure. This, this is perfect. Thank you very much. Sure, sure, no problem. It is all, I told you, it's all open source. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, want to, we want the whole world to benefit, not me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, very interesting work. 
Um, I have an air calorimeter, so if, if I can borrow one of your reactors, I'd be happy to test it and measure exactly the amount of excess heat there is. See, we have done three types of measurements. Once we are just using air calorimeter, we are done and got the results. Then once we did what is isothermal, isothermal, that is keep everything sealed, allow the temperature to settle down and calculate the power input, power output. And third one is measure only the surface temperature in an open atmosphere and then do conduction loss, radiation loss, convection loss, you model it. And we found that the excess heat is there. It is within first decibel, that is, you suppose excess is 30 watts, sometimes you get 25 watts, 30 watts, 32 watts, around that few, few degree, few watts difference. Otherwise, excess heat is there when there is a fuel. Okay, thank you. But variation is a few watts here and there, yes, I agree. Okay, may I make my question? Yeah, please. So, two questions. First uh -huh. one, the pressure in the chamber, did you control the pressure? Sorry. Gas pressure in the, in the chamber? Yeah, yeah. How much? See, the pressure... More or less, see, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> see, uh, what we do, in the beginning we use, uh, at the atmospheric temperature, or open temperature, we fill the gas, approximately yeah. between 20 to 40 pascals. Pascals. Uh, low pressure, low so pressure. Low pressure, vacuum. Uh, and then uh, seal it. And then uh, you let the pressure keep changing depending on the temperature. Yes, but the operating pressure, which one? Huh? one the operating pressure of the chamber, uh, one pascal, uh, one thousand, which one? No, no, no. The, the, in the beginning, you see... No, the beginning, no. Okay. When you make stable condition measurements, Sorry? when you make the experiment, yeah, which goes. one is the pressure of the chamber? I'll tell you, you see, if the, for 100 watts, the chamber pressure would have gone to 40,000 pascals approximately from 20, 25 to 30, it would have gone to 40,000. What? 40,000 pascals. 40,000 40, 40, pascals. 40, yes. Okay. Um, we did not get good results when we went to higher yes, pressures. My question again, uh, about the reference chamber, uh, the pressure was the same or different? Same. I told you, four, tran four uh, uh, generators are kept in the same table, mm -hmm. all are filled to the same pressure, except one had palladium, other three did not have palladium. Okay, so in some way, your experiment, remember the experiment made by Mizuno. Mizuno, professor, Mizuno in uh, Japan, with the mesh, nickel mesh, or different. Mizuno has done, uh, Mizuno has nickel mesh, with, I saw the Mizuno paper, we are done, I wrote to Mizuno. I shared my results with Mizuno. Mm -hmm. he, he, he allowed, uh, he could not respond because of the English language. His jaw, Rothwell responded. Okay. You know Jet Rothwell. Yeah, okay. He responded. He told me, you are on the right track, you proceed. Okay, okay. So thanks again, your interesting paper. And now, Natalia will say something.